If it feels like we were just here, it's, it's because it, we were. BWI Daily Edition breaking news here on YouTube. I'm your host, Thomas Frank Carr. Ryan Snyder, our recruiting insider, bringing you the news you want to hear if you're a Penn State football fan. A second defensive line recruit today coming to the Nittany Lions. So, Ryan, tell us about what happened this afternoon on Tuesday for Penn State football. Yeah, Tamari and Parker with a massive commitment for Penn State. I think you can make the case that this is the biggest commitment so far this year. And obviously, Birchmeyer, a potential five-star player. Javen Williams uh, is a five-star by 0-3. But this is one of those ones where you go down south, you beat out some top Southern schools for a player that, you know, a couple weeks ago I didn't really see coming. Uh, I, I thought I knew Penn State had a good relationship. I knew things were, were trending that they were going to be in the mix, but I didn't see a – boom, come and visit, commit, almost instantly kind of uh, ending to this one, right? So in that in that perspective, you, you can make the case that this is one of the biggest commitments yet so far. And uh, again, I don't want to uh, overlook the the additions of Birchmeyer and, and Williams as far as where their rankings are. Obviously, they're they're a bit higher, but just yeah. I, I expected those guys to end up here, right? And yeah. this is one where he didn't. And not only did you not expect that, but – here he is. He's he's a top 100 prospect and at a very important position. Of course, they yep. got deny uh, last year, and, and that's great. But man, you can never have enough uh, highly rated uh, edge rushers, uh, yep. and, and this is this is another one of those for for Penn State to go along with Jamil Lyons too, who by the way is also a, a four star prospect and a pretty good player. Yeah, and you mentioned uh, one of your favorite things to say is follow the visits. A one and done for Penn State. So when you talk about an upset in recruiting, uh, he had been to a bunch of other schools. And I know you had mentioned previously he's visited a lot of places, but one place he didn't visit was Penn State. So take us through kind of that journey for uh, Tamarian, who they call TJ Parker, coming to mm -hmm. Penn State, given what you said, an upset in recruiting with all the places that he was visiting and all the interest he had from a bunch of different schools. Mm -hmm. Well, if you go back to 2021, a lot of visits to Auburn uh, throughout basically last season, which just makes sense. You know, Auburn's probably the, the school he's closest to. Uh, a couple of visits to Georgia as well in 2021 and then early 2022. I'm not exactly sure what happened with Georgia. I thought Georgia was going to be in the mix there. I, I don't know if they filled up their positions or they're focused on other players, whatever it may be. But it felt like Georgia kind of fell off a bit. And then really, when, when you get into the spring here, you see a couple visits to Tennessee. Tennessee was absolutely a player. And, and you, we have two visits to Florida, too. Uh, one to Florida in April, one once to Florida uh, just a few weeks ago in, in early June. And, and and really, those were the two schools that felt like the main competition here. I mean, Tamarian flat out admitted that uh, to Corey Bender, who's a, a good friend of mine who works for on 3 down there in, uh, in Gainesville. I mean, Corey, Corey was telling me, look, he flat out said Florida and Tennessee are the top two schools with Michigan State then uh, being being the other school in the mix. We have him uh, going to Michigan State in May there, too. So he wasn't uh, he was just in East Lansing not that long ago and was expected to return to East Lansing for an official visit here uh, this upcoming weekend. But one and done with Penn State, man. We, yeah. we, we knew the relationship. Like I said, we knew the relationship was strong. I always thought they would be, you know, top top five or so like that. But to come up here. For a one and done kind of visit, it really speaks to this staff's uh, just what they're able to do when guys are on campus and uh, how they're able to, to to present Penn State as a as a complete kind of package. So, didn't see this one coming a couple of days ago. This is this is massive for them. Yeah, and and massive for the defensive end position. You mentioned uh, John Scott Jr. getting to Marion Parker, and of course, denied Dennis Sutton the previous year. If you factor in the transfer of Damian Robinson, who is now a Penn State Nittany Lion, they have a top 100 edge rusher each of the last three seasons. That is a building mm -hmm. a track record at Penn State that helps through the transfer portal, but that that uh, defensive end, you, Penn State's starting to build some steam in that area of getting guys to come to campus and, and this growing trend of having edge defenders go to the NFL. That is a huge thing because as, as you know, you, football evolves, passing and getting after the quarterback is a huge thing. So in this class in particular, you and I, and I've I've been banging on this drum for a while that the defensive end position after they got Jameel Lyons and uh, Mason Robinson commits to uh, Northwestern this was an area that was a, a huge question mark I thought this was going to be an area that Penn State missed you know outside of Lyons the, getting Parker in this class that's another huge win for for Penn State how do you think this affects the long run of the recruiting process for the Nittany Lions with the class of 2023 
I definitely think the defensive tackle becomes uh, more of a focus now. Over yeah. I mean, I, I, I've been thinking for the longest time, probably three defensive tackles, two defensive ends. But the, but there's other quality DNs that they'll they'll certainly keep pursuing. And, and you know, the, I'm sure there's guys who are committed elsewhere who I wouldn't be surprised who pop up on campus at some point during the season. But getting Jason Moore, a Will Norman, a Derek LeBlanc, that that seems like the the priority now moving forward. Of course, you have Tyreek Blaining, you have Matthias Barnwell, both quality guys. And then if you can add in uh, another top-ranked prospect like a Moore or a Norman or a LeBlanc, I think that would really – maybe not be totally finalized because they'll, they'll I'm sure things will change up a little bit in the fall, but uh, that, that would pretty much uh, for, for me, at least I, I think is, is quality for the, for the defensive line position. Yeah. So we'll see how that shakes out. Of course, one, one thing I want to add real quick too, is uh, obviously John Scott's the lead recruiter here deserves a ton of credit, but I also just want to make sure people understand the, the impact that Allen's the Midas had on this recruitment. I've had a lot of people tell me over the last 24 hours to, to make sure Zemitis gets his due. And and I've had a lot of people really telling me that, a lot of prospects too, uh, talking about Zemitis and, and his impact here. He he oversees defensive uh, you know, recruiting uh, for, for the most part, helps a lot with, with the defensive guys. And and AZ had a big part in this one. And Terry Smith too helped help close this deal. So shout out to, to those three guys, man, because they, they, they just got one of the biggest commitments, I, I think, of the year for Penn State. Yeah, and check out the BWI Daily Edition recruiting show where Ryan goes in depth about that and how some of the uh, the younger analysts for Penn State, former players, Dion Barnes, Alan Zemitis, Dan Connor, how that plays into kind of the the promotion and, and the depth of the ability to recruit uh, a player going to Penn State when you've played for that team. So let's take a quick look. Uh, oh, and one last thing. I, I think you're right about the defensive line class and that defensive tackle position. I, I don't think you're right. I know you're right. But I also think it opens the door for them to have an elite defensive line class for the first time in a long time. When you look at the uh, um, Charles Power I, in his assessment of um, of uh, Tamarian Parker, called him a high floor player. I think that's absolutely right. Lots of great skills. We'll get to, into that in just one second. But now you have some upside plays in Jamil Lyons and uh, in Matthias Barnwell, who can be amazing talents because of their physical abilities who are raw at the position. If you add one more player to this class and you are able to hit on one of those high profile defensive tackles, this is the thing that you and I have been talking about finding those big guys that are super athletes. And I think Penn State got one here and that opens the door for them to get that thing that they've been chasing for a while is closing that gap on other teams that have elite offensive and defensive line talent. I can't argue it. <laughs> so it's, speak, it's important speaking of Go that ahead. let's take a look at the uh updated class rankings and stats of course you can check out the uh, class rankings and all those things over at on three but right now penn state stands with 14 total commits in the class uh six of them are four stars three are eight stars a couple of the, those guys are borderline <laughs> four stars uh and then you now said three eight stars t frank i gotta clarify <laughs> <laughs> eight they... three stars let's just clarify that one they have eight... a Eight stars would be incredible. <laughs> Apparently, they've they've uh, recruited a couple grizzly bears. I don't know how you get it to be an eight star, but that's like uh, <laughs> twice as good as a regular football player. Uh, sorry, three, uh, eight, three stars. And uh, of the top prospects now, the defensive line has overtaken the offensive line for the top number of recruits in the class. Uh, any last thoughts before we get into a quick evaluation of TJ Parker? And then we get out of here. No, not, not really. I mean, I think this is going to be a big week coming up here still. I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's another one or two. I don't really have anybody specifically that I'm watching. Of course, we know Tony Rojas, July 5th. We know Tammy Robinson, uh, July 15th. But King Mack is certainly still out there, somebody that I'm you know watching as closely as I possibly can. And uh, people have made it clear to, to keep an eye on him. So I know there's quite a few commits who seem to be uh, showing everybody on Twitter and getting people excited. I, I just I wouldn't be surprised if we see another commitment here before the end of the week. Lots of emotion flying around last night, uh, Monday night on Twitter, all of the top threes and top five and commitment dates. There was a palpable energy as I'm sitting on, on the couch watching Twitter. So, yeah, it, it's it's commitment season. Uh, so let's get to TJ Parker. Quick preview of his T. Frank's film room, which is going to come up tomorrow, Wednesday at BlueWhiteIllustrated.com. You can check that out. Uh, if you have a premium membership, you get it for just $1. You get access to all that premium content. But one of the things when we talk about a high floor player with TJ Parker, what Charles Power is talking about, 
He is an elite run defender. This kid knows how to play the run. I love his fundamentals. As you just watch him bench press somebody into the gap, closes the gap, and then gets the tackle. He's strong. He is, uh, you know, we mentioned six foot three, almost six four, two hundred and fifty pounds. He's got a ready-made college football uh, prototype at the position sort of body. And his patience, his vision, when it comes to being a run defender. All of these things that you're seeing right now, these aren't just because he's bigger and faster and stronger. He's playing football at a higher level than the players around him. Uh, you see there on that last play, pulling, getting in the gap, making sure that you have to bounce these things. And remember, run defense is a 1-11th job. So here on this last play, you'll see him blow up a tackle who looks like he's 350, about 10 yards into the backfield, and then makes the play bounce. So he is a very good run defender. And of course, you saw earlier, and I'll show him here again, uh, his hand usage as a football player, as a defensive end, is great. Got a long arm, a rip, a bull rush. He is a power player with good speed. I wouldn't say he has elite speed, but enough to make him make him a nightmare for defense for offensive tackles when he's uh, rushing on third downs. So those are the things that I that stand out right away as far as. Penn State, to be a top 100 recruit, you can't just be the biggest, the fastest, and the strongest. You have to show some of those uh, positional skills that you're going to more easily translate to the next level than a lot of the players around you, and that is exactly what Penn State gets in TJ Parker, another high-quality pass rush power player to go with Deny Dennis Sutton. Bit of a trend there with two guys that are more more power, more violence with their hands than they are pure speed. So Penn State getting some well-rounded players in the class of 2023. I already asked you if you had last thoughts, but any last, last thoughts, just because I want you to to get a shout-out for anything you want to promote at the site coming up this week from recruiting. Uh, nothing I really try to promote. I'm trying to currently look up how far Alabaster, Alabama is from Auburn, Alabama to see if we can go see him play when Penn State's <laughs> down there. Uh, it is about two miles, so he's not far from Birmingham. So okay. we'll, uh, we'll, we'll figure that out when the time comes, but, uh, I may have a reason to go to Alabama now. So it'll be All fun. right. Uh, you, you chartered me a flight or if we can get the helicopter, I'll go. But I don't know if I'm uh, taking a connecting flight out of State College to go down to Alabama. Although you are our uh, you are our intrepid reporter going all over the place, watching all these players going to Florida, going to Harrisburg. Such a far trip for you, Ryan. Oh, Harrisburg. <laughs> yeah, so far. Florida, baby. Harrisburg. So far. All right, so stay tuned to Blue White Illustrated on YouTube for more breaking news as we get into commitment season. I'm your host, Thomas Frank Carr, Ryan Snyder, our recruiting insider. We will be back.